Well, good evening, everybody. It is a privilege to be here to celebrate uh, the advent of Christmas, the uh, Christmas Eve with y'all this evening. And I uh, just want to encourage us all to focus our hearts and focus our minds this evening on the reason why we are here, and that is to celebrate the first coming of Jesus Christ, our King also remembering that he is coming again and that he is a just and a good father. Amen? So we will pray this evening. We'll get started, and then we'll have a brief video. Father, thank you so much for bringing us together this evening. Lord, we love you. We give you glory. We give you honor because you deserve all glory and all honor and all praise. So, Father, as we... As we look back and as we remember the birth of your son, Jesus, Father, stir in us a hope and a, and a joy because you are coming again. And Lord, we love you, we praise you, we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, all of God's people say, amen. amen. And if you'll stand as we sing together, joy to the world. <coughs> joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And in Sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven, heaven, nature sing. Oh, we will sing, sing, sing. Oh, joy to the world. up joy to the world and joy to the world the Savior reigns let men their songs employ while fields and floods rocks, hills and plains repeat the sounding joy repeat the sounding joy And we will sing, sing, 
Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20 reads this way. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. And this was the first registration when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And all went to be registered to his each town. And Joseph went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see these things that has been happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen and had been told. Amen. If you'll join me as we sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, I'd ask you to stand so we sing hymn number 240, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. says, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training to us, 
training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people of his own possessions who are zealous for good works. Advent hope moves us. Advent peace stills us. Advent joy stirs us. Advent love leads us that we might worship and adore our King Jesus. And tonight we light the Christ candle. For Jesus is the light of the world, the destroyer of all darkness. The Lord prophesies through Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of deep darkness, on them the light has shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and the and of peace there will be no end. Please join me in prayer this morning, or this evening. I told him I was gonna do it. Lord, we thank you so much for tonight and what it means for us together as a family. We thank you or we can worship you as the everlasting Father. And a Father who, when he said, let there be light, Lord, there was so much in that when creation was made. Because Jesus came to be the light of the world. And we thank you for that. We thank you for what tonight, what tomorrow, and what every day means, Lord, and that is walking with Jesus, living for Jesus, So, Lord, thank you that we can celebrate tonight his birth. We can also celebrate his life. We can celebrate his death, celebrate him rising. We can celebrate his coming again. We worship you, Father. Lord, thank you for your your kingdom. Thank you for your will that you show us, Lord, so much. Your love, your kindness to us. Lord, forgive us where we fall short. Lord, allow us to uh, be ever mindful of why Jesus came. Lord, to bridge that gap between you and us. Lord, we need Jesus. So we praise you tonight. Be with those that can't be with us here. Lord, those that are joining us online, we ask and pray that you would just be uh, ever present, Lord, with us in our, in our hearts this evening. Pray that we can just not worry about what lies ahead in the next hour or two, but right now, Lord, that we would just be present with you and your spirit be present with you in your word, Lord, that you would bless the word that, that is shared tonight. Be with Pastor Wes and in the times that we have of, of communion and offering and candlelight. God, that it would give you all the glory and the honor. So, Lord, we worship you tonight. We thank you. We put your protection in this place and surround this, this place, Lord, with your spirit that we would leave this place tonight, Lord, not just coming to a candlelight service, but actually entering into the place where you were in your presence. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Thank you, Brian. We've been doing a series here at Heritage called What Do You Bring or What to Bring This King? And um, we're in a tradition where we, in Advent, we, we have different themes. And um, 
The first week we, we look at hope. And what, what do you bring this king, the king that has everything? And so you bring him your hopelessness and the things that rob you of hope. And you receive his hope. The second week we looked at the theme of peace. You bring the Lord the things that rob you of peace, your anxieties, your, your worries, and what he gives in exchange is peace. The third week we looked at joy and we think about what are those things that, that cause us to be full of sorrow and sighing. And as we bring those to the Lord, he gives us joy. And then when we, we bring our, our longings and our our, um, our loneliness, and he, he gives us his love. And then tonight, we want to talk about light and what light means for us. Um, light is the prerequisite. It's what you got to have before you can have life. You got to have the light first. And the Bible says that in the beginning, uh, when everything was being created, the very first thing God said, he had to start with what? Had to start with light. It says that there was darkness that was over the deep. And the Spirit of God was, was hovering. But God spoke forth light. This was before there was a sun. There was, this is before there was a moon. What was the light? Where did it come from? It came from the very light of God Himself, because that's who He is, the very essence of His being. It emanated from Him, His glory. He said, Let there be light. And then when we're told about Jesus coming, it says, In Him, Jesus, the word, was life, and the life was the light of all people. And that light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So I want us to talk real quickly tonight about Jesus, who destroys the darkness. He says, I'm the light of the world, and whoever will follow me will not have to walk in darkness, but will have the very light of life. At Heritage, we like to go back to our Jewish roots so we truly can understand what the Bible is talking about. And so we have the Hanukkah menorah up here. And I won't get into what Hanukkah is all about, but it really is about folk looking and seeing Jesus in this as the light of the world. And this middle candle that's above the other ones, that is called the shamash, which means the servant candle or the servant light, because what's it do? It lights all of the other candles. When Jesus came into the world and John talked about Jesus, he said, Jesus is that true light that gives light to everyone. So just as the servant candle comes to light each one of the candles of the Hanukkah menorah, Jesus has come to be the light of the world, to light, to be a servant, to light every one of us, to bring his light and his life to us. So what do we bring this king. I want to encourage you tonight. Bring your darkness. Every dark thought, depression, doubt, discouragement, thoughts of death, thoughts of defeat. Bring your dark deeds, sin, selfishness, destruction, and let his light destroy those things and set you free. Receive his light um, this day. So what we're going to see is three things that Jesus destroys. Let Jesus destroy the darkness of not knowing. You might use the word ignorance, but uh, I wanted to make sure my five-year-old granddaughter understood what I was talking about. So let's talk about the darkness of just not knowing. You don't know, and then you need somebody to tell you so that you do, do know. You don't see, and so that's what the light does. We bring out the candle, we light the candle, and now you can see, and the candle lights the darkness. It destroys the darkness of not knowing. And that's what the angels did for the shepherds. They came. First, the individual angel came and stood there and says, I've got good news of great joy for unto you is born this day a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign for you. The sign is you're going to see him wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying <clears throat> in a manger. Why is that significant? That he came to the angels, and the only place we see mangers talked about is when we look at, when we hear about the shepherds. Because the shepherds understood what the um, angels were telling him. Um, they were, he was saying something significant. See, this is not the, we've got a little wooden manger, that's mostly what we see these days. But the actual Bethlehem mangers were hewn out of rocks. They were very strong, they were very hard, and they were able to protect. 
And what they did with the little lambs, the Bethlehem was known for its perfect lambs because these lambs would be used for sacrifice. And so they would take the lambs right after they were born so there'd be no messed up fur, no messed up joints, nothing wrong with the lamb whatsoever, no uh, nothing at all. They would wrap it tightly and they would place them in these mangers and there they would be protected because they were then going to be given to the priest who would offer these lambs as sacrifices. So really, few people would fully understand who this Savior was with this kind of language except these shepherds. They understood that this was the Messiah. He's going to be the Savior and the Deliverer, and he's going to de deliver us in the way they didn't expect that he was going to be the Lamb of God who would take away the sin of the world. And he would destroy that darkness. And so they went with haste and with great joy and got to find Joseph and Mary and Jesus lying in a manger as the Lamb of God who would give himself because he and the Father loved us so much. We also see that Jesus then comes and what he's doing is he's destroying the darkness of sin and of death. His life and his light defeats sin. It defeats death so that you can live in freedom from the penalty of sin, freedom from the power of sin in your life right now, and without fear, without fear of death because Jesus has defeated death, hell, and the grave um, when he rose. And so we have this defeat there so that we then, and this is why he came, um, John puts it this way, for this purpose, the Son of God was revealed. He was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. He came to do this. He came to be our deliverer and deliver us from our sin and deliver us from death. And that's what Isaiah saw 700 years earlier before Jesus came, that the people who walked in darkness see a great light. Upon them, light has shone, a sun uh, is born, a child, a child is born, a son is given, and he's going to destroy the rule and the reign of terror of Satan who comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and instead he's going to give us life and light. And finally, let's make this personal. Have you allowed Jesus to destroy the darkness in you? The dark thoughts, the dark deeds, to let him take those. Let his light shine and set you free. 2 Corinthians 4 says this, God's, the God who said, let there be, or let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts. So he wants to now come and shine in us to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. He wants to come in and reveal himself to you to make the darkness in you flee, the darkness of sin, the darkness of our selfishness, all the destructive things we do. He wants to come and bring his healing. And Paul goes on to say the next verse, he says, and we've got this treasure, the glory of God. We've got this treasure in jars of clay. He's talking about our human bodies to show that their surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. What the Lord wants to do is he wants to now put his light, his glory inside of you. And that's what Jesus has come to make possible. To give you light, to give you hope, to give you life, to give you salvation, and to make you and to make me the very temples of a living God, that he'll come and dwell. His glory will come and live inside of you. And you'll know that you know that you know that you belong to him. Jesus is the destroyer of darkness. The Bible says what he will do is that he will give us the inheritance of light. And he will rescue you from the kingdom of darkness, transfer you to the kingdom of his son, in whom we now have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. If you have not allowed him to take you out of the darkness and into the kingdom of light. What are you waiting for? Now is the perfect time for that. I want to encourage you. 
bring Jesus your darkness, the dark thoughts, the dark deeds. He wants to take them. And he will give you his light and his life. You will be changed and you will live with hope. In October, Alice and I got to be at the Billy Graham Center. And our worship leader was a fellow by the name of Michael O'Brien. He'd been the lead singer for a group called New Song. And he'd been a worship pastor at a church in California. And at that church, there was a gentleman who attended, and um, he got to know really well by the name of Hugh Martin. Hugh Martin was a, one of the top arrangers and songwriters and vocal coaches of Hollywood and Broadway's golden age. And in 1944, he wrote the musical score and several, almost all of the songs for a um, movie called Meet Me in St. Louis. And as a part of Meet Me in St. Louis, he wrote a song for Judy Garland called Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Um, it went on to become the second most recorded song, Christmas song, in history. I bet many of you could hum it right now. Um, it was a very secular song, and any, actually anything that had any kind of Christian reference that might have been in the song was, was taken out and was changed, and it just talked about may the fates um, align or arise. But in 1977... Hugh Martin met Jesus. And before he died at age 96, he rewrote the lyrics to this song. And he gave them to the music minister at his church, Michael O'Brien. And he changed it from a, a song about wishing people a Merry Christmas to instead saying, I want you to have a blessed Christmas. Blessed means that God has imparted his divine favor, his divine approval upon you, his goodness. And it's a song about worshiping Jesus. I'm going to invite Libby to come and sing this song. And as she does, I'm going to invite you to take one of these little cards that are in front of you. Um, it's called a connection card. And I, I would encourage, we, we invite everybody to fill one of these out. Are you making a commitment? Are you ready today to say, I want to turn from the darkness. I, I want to turn to Jesus Christ. I want to receive his life. I want to receive his light in my life so that I can not just have a Merry Christmas, but I can have truly a blessed Christmas. And I can be blessed to be a blessing. Um, there's some options you have there. And I encourage you. Say, Lord, I'm, I'm confessing you as my Savior and Lord. You, you can't be passive and follow Jesus. It, it requires a decision. And I want to encourage you today to make a decision to confess Jesus. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, he really is who he says he is, he says you'll be saved for with the heart you believe and you're justified. With the mouth you confess and you're saved. You're delivered. You're delivered from that darkness. And the miracle takes place. So maybe today you want to say, I want to confess Jesus for the first time. Maybe you're coming back. Maybe it's a renewal. Maybe you'd like to get connected in a life group or have someone work with you one-on-one -on, -one on how to follow Jesus, I pray um, that you would let us know where you are. And in a little while, we're going to have an offering. And you can place this in the offering. And what that basically is saying is, Lord, I'm giving you myself. Maybe you'd like to, to share a praise. You can write that on the back, what God is doing, what you're thanking him for tonight. And let that be your gift to him. Maybe it's a prayer. You can write that, and our, our staff will be praying over these. But I want to encourage you um, to do that. Um, I want to pray, and then Shalom, if you'd go ahead and, and play, and Libby's going to sing for us. Lord, we just thank you. 
when we give our hearts to you this Christmas. We need you. Amen. Have yourself a blessed little Christmas. Christ the King is born. Let your respond with an offering time and I encourage you number one give yourself to Jesus and that's what we why we put these in here just to say Lord I'm giving you myself a blank check I'm yours um, and this could be the beginning of a whole new life for you um, so as our ushers come let's uh, let's pray anything that you give financially um, will go towards our missions and our missionaries and the and the outreach ministries uh, that we have here at Heritage. Father, we, um, we thank you that you are such a good God. You love us so much that you began by giving. You gave your only begotten Son so that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen.
time for communion, um, the invitation is this. If you repent of your sin and you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we invite you to receive Holy Communion with us. You don't have to be a member of our congregation. Um, we see ourselves simply as servants at the Lord's table. So um, if you are, are right with the Lord, we invite you to come and receive. Um, we're going to have some folks, if you can't come to the front, we will have a, we'll do that. We'll bring it to you. Um, I wanted to lead into communion with something. I don't know if many of you have seen the movie, I Heard the Bells, um, about Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. And uh, the thing that moved me uh, the most was um, really the, when his wife got born again. And she wrote something incredible. And so I went and did some research. It's, her name was Fanny. And uh, while having communion at, at Christmas... 1841, um, she came uh, to know the Lord. And I'm going to read uh, that here in just um, a moment. Um, the, the hymn, I Heard the Bells, or the poem, what's, what's powerful about it is he chronicles his own journey from doubt, <laughs> from depression, and from grief to hope and faith once again. And that's what the Lord wants to do in each of our lives. So this is how Fanny records her encounter with Jesus when she received communion, 1841. Today, I knelt before the altar and I received the sacrament. Do this in remembrance of me has ever stirred my conscience when I have seen the communion table, when I have prayed to draw near to the beloved Son of the Father. But today... This birthday of the world, for Christ was born to bestow true life on all. With its words of healing benediction, all the hopes the heavenly choir sang, the infinite love of the Creator for his children swelled in my heart with irresistible emotion and drew it to the altar. I felt overwhelming tenderness and joy. And when the pastor offered me the bread with the words, do this in remembrance of Christ. I trembled violently in profound awe, and I seemed already to myself a new creature. Happiness too deep for speech or thought succeeded a blessed, blessed peace. That very peace angels on this day promised us in fervent joy. The Father's love encircling us like an atmosphere, pressing evenly on our whole being like light. I rejoice. I could not have died contented without it. And now life seems more sacred to me than ever. O most merciful Father, receive the overflowing love and gratitude of your child for this crowning blessing of her heart. I pray that as you come in reverence and awe to receive, you too may encounter our living Lord. Let's take a moment and silently repent of our sin. As the Holy Spirit um, brings anything to mind, let that conviction, um, let you just offer that to the Lord in repentance. Let's prepare our heart in silent confession. Lord, we thank you that as we repent of our sin, you forgive us of our sins and you cleanse us of all unrighteousness. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Join with us in the communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It's a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness. You brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and you breathed into us the very breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. You made co covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior 
And at his birth, the angels sang, glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem, and there found no room. So Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem, and was despised and rejected, as in the poverty of a stable Jesus was born. So by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh, born of a woman on that night long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you, and do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let's pray. Lord, we just ask that right now you pour out your Holy Spirit on these elements of bread and the cup, that you would make them be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we might become the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, filled with his Holy Spirit, communing with you, made one with you, one with each other, in unity and service and ministry to all the world until you return in final victory and we feast at your heavenly banquet at your table. So we give you all the glory and we give you all the honor and all the thanks. And all God's people said, amen and amen. We're going to have two stations in each aisle. We're going to invite you to come a little different than we do on some of our Sundays from the back to the front. And you'll come down the side aisle as the ushers direct you. And um, you can spend as much time as you like up front at the chancel rail if you'd like to pray and just come as a family or as an individual and, and spend time there. Um, we want you to feel free um, to do that. And we'll um, worship the Lord as we come. Could have imagined. 
imagine this infant and the infinite son of god so wonderful and heaven's perfect miracle Glory in the highest, glory in the highest, Prince of Peace, King of Kings, Jesus, Lord of everything, glory in the
to 
We're going to take all the lights down. I'm lighting my candle from the Christ candle. We all receive our light from the servant candle. Jesus is the suffering servant. And he gives himself for us. And he is the true light coming into the world that gives light to everyone. Would you receive the light? And would you pass it on? We invite you to stand as you're able and tip the candle that's being lit. If your candle is already lit, I encourage you not to tip it. But if it's unlit, tip it to light it. From all of us here at Heritage, we pray that you will have yourself a blessed little Christmas and that you will go and share the light of Jesus Christ. You'll not go and leave church, but you'll go and be the church, the people of Jesus Christ who bear and who share his light. God bless you and may his blessings go with you. the
mountain, over the hills and everywhere go. Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is. Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Oh, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere.